for weeks now on Wall Street and that in cities across the country, massive crowds have gathered for protests against income inequality and corporate greed. The demonstrations have raised awareness of a growing discontent many have for what they see as a persistent gap between the haves and have-nots and the business models that they say keep it that way. In a different way, our next guests have also been calling for a change to the corporate structure. Reset Connecticut, or the Social Enterprise Trust, is a Connecticut group dedicated to encouraging companies to embrace a new business model that they say puts people and purpose before profit. Kate Emery is a founder of Reset, and Jim Carter of Carter Realty sits on the group's board of directors. Thanks, both of you, for being here, and Chris Keating also joining us again for this conversation. You know, I'm so intrigued by this, this whole concept. I guess if we could just start very basically with um, what your group is and really what social, social enterprising is. Sure, sure. Um, well, social enterprise is a, a new way of doing business. It's a way of solving community problems through business. Um, and, and what makes it really unique is it doesn't require any uh, tax burden in order to make that happen. So it's a, it's a brand new approach. So um, give us an example. Um, probably the most commonly uh, known example, it would be Newman's Own. They do business, but all of the profits that come out of that business go into things like Hole in the Wall Gang. Uh, another one would be Tom's Shoes. When you buy a pair of shoes for Tom's Shoes, then another pair goes to a, um, a kid in a third world country that, that could use them. And um, if you could tell me why, why you got involved, in, and you, you're a business owner. Correct. Yeah, I, I got involved uh, mainly because of Kate. Um, and Kate really walks the talk, so to speak. And um, I was invited to meet with Kate and uh, learned about her vision for Reset and you know what she's done with Walker System is, is a social enterprise. Um, so she has done it with her own company and it's a very, I've been involved in nonprofits for 30 years and this is really a bridging of the for-profit world and the not-for-profit world where you put people and purpose before profit. So, Kate, tell me, tell me how you did that in your own company. So, Walker um, is what kind of a company? Walker Systems Support, and it's a technology advisory firm. And, um, and so it was a very traditional for-profit organization. I started it in the 80s. Uh, we had grown to be about 50 people. And I decided, given my um, stage in life, that it was time to think about what we do for going forward. Um, and I wanted to protect the way that we were... Um, running the company at that point, which is like a social enterprise. So we're committed to um, transparency. We're committed to social responsibility. We're committed to participative governance. And one of the um, uh, more sort of um, understandable aspects that a lot of people refer to is the fact that any profits that we distribute, one-third goes to the employees, one-third goes to the community, and one-third goes to shareholders. And so we created that and then locked in that structure and gave an easement on, on um, Walker to reset so that, that that structure is protected in perpetuity. Interesting. Tell, tell us how much uh, of an overall impact you think that this has had. Obviously, uh, Newman's own uh, employs a lot of people, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's probably one of the best known examples, as you said. How much of an impact and how much of a trend is this? Uh, you're, in, you're involved in this every day. I think it is a rapidly growing trend. I mean, if you look at England, there is a minister of social enterprise. Um, so it's not something that's that's brand new, um, but it's really growing fast in the in the United States. And I think what you're seeing is a confluence of a couple of different populations that um, that understand the need to go in this new direction. So you've got all the young kids that are coming up and coming out of school today. They are not interested in just going to work for the man and collecting a paycheck. They are passionate about the problems that we're facing in the world today and making a difference. So you've got that group. And then on the other end, you've got the people my age and older who are maybe looking back at what's gone on and feeling somewhat responsible for it and wanting to do something that's going to, uh, to, to make things a little more right. So those are two very big populations of people who are saying, you know what, why don't we think about different ways of doing business? And doing business in, in this way is, uh, is, is very appealing to them. 
And, and if I could just add, uh, what Kate has done with Walker Systems is she's channeled their social purpose actually to supporting Reset. So right now, Walker Systems is really the primary financial supporter to Reset, which is committed to, pr uh, to promote and protect social enterprise. So the event that we had yesterday that drew over 200 people, plus the governor, plus a lot of the other leading businessmen in the area, you know, it was through Walker Systems' support of Reset as a social enterprise that this mission is getting accomplished. You know, lots of companies have corporate commitments to the community. I mean, is it that that um, is often not sufficient or that they could do more? Is that the point? Well, I think one of the best examples would be um, uh, like Ben and Jerry's. So if you have an organization like theirs that was a for-profit business, but there was a philosophy of give back, uh, what happens is you get a, a, a company that's built on some very strong um, ideals, ideas, and as such they grow and they become very um, profitable. And then what happens is when the visionary behind that moves on, then the only options are to sell and you sell to somebody yeah. and uh, usually it ends up in the hands of somebody who's trying to then turn that profit and then the ideals are pulled out, maybe kept in place from a marketing perspective. But for Ben and Jerry's, you know, the seven to one ratio of high to low pay or the give back to peace got pulled out and all that's left is sort of we use organic foods kind of a thing. So unless you can protect that legally, which is what we did at Walker, then, then it's just a philosophy that, that goes away when the, when the current ownership changes hands. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but it's a really interesting topic. Just very quickly, if people want to learn more, they should go to socialenterprisetrust.org. Socialenterprisetrust.org. Thanks to both of you for being here. Thanks Thank for you very much. Around. Okay, so coming up next, we are going to talk about the uh, presidential politics and the race to the White House.